Hi everyone, welcome back to the immunology series. This is the fifth lecture, and in this video, we are going to look at the mechanisms and then the details in acute inflammation. And this lecture also wraps up the basics of our innate immune system. So in this lecture, we are going to look at the four hallmarks of acute inflammation, look at the effect of each of one of those, and then also look at the steps involved in neutrophil recruitment during acute inflammation. And lastly, we are going to look at what's the end of acute inflammation. So this lecture is going to be relatively short. Acute inflammation is actually the hallmark of innate immune response, and it is usually induced by tissue injuries, some type of toxic compounds, or pathogen invasion. And there are four characteristics that is associated with acute inflammation, uh, that is rubber, color, tumor, and dolor. Now, those are just some fancy name that it means redness, heat or warmth, swelling, and pain. So from here point on, I'll just refer to the regular terms that we describe the characteristics. There are two major players that spark the start of acute inflammation, which are the macrophages and acute phase proteins secreted by the liver. And these reactions are usually very fast. The onsets are within a few minutes to hours. And what happened during that time frame? Neutrophils migrate to the site of infection and provide an innate immune response. So we're going to look at an example of injury to describe what happened with acute inflammation. So pick your injury or infection. Do you want acne or paper cut or touching rolls? Now, I personally think touching rolls hurt, even though paper cut probably hurt more. So this little person decided to put his finger on the spike of the rose and got injured. Hmm. All right, so the rose is not exactly clean. Okay, it grows outside in the nature, and pathogens enter the site of injury. Well, what's going to happen to this person's finger is that it's going to turn red fairly quick, and that redness is due to increased blood flow. Well, it may also associate with some warmness in, in that area, well, when you have increased blood flow, it will increase tissue temperature. So those two kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, and well, later on, it's going to be swelling, swelled up. That is due to increased fluid that is in the extracellular space. And pain is often associated with injury. And that is because of edema or swelling and lipid mediators such as prostaglandins and leukotrienes leading to that pain. And we're going to look at each one of those in the later slides. Just a recap of what happened with this particular type of injury. Remember, I said macrophages are one of the two main factors that initiate acute inflammation. So in our reticular endothelial systems, which is a network of macrophages that reside within the peripheral tissue, such as kidney and spleen lymph nodes, respond very quickly uh, to you know, things that are associated with microorganisms, such as those carbohydrates and lipids, and what we call them, the PEMs, right? Now we've learned about the mechanisms of how macrophages recognize PAMs and got activated. Eventually, it will secrete different cytokines and chemokines, and one particular cytokine it got secreted is interleukin-6, and as well as TNF-alpha that is associated with the steps that we're going to talk about. The second factor that is associated with acute inflammation is actually started by 
IL-6, which was secreted by the macrophages. The IL-6 will induce the production or synthesis of acute phase proteins, including our complement protein, C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, and mannose binding lactin. We've looked at mannose binding lactin and complement proteins and C-reactive proteins in their role in activating the complement system in our last lecture. And we didn't talk about fibrinogen very much, and actually fibrinogen is important to cut the thrombin to form blood clot that limit certain migrations of pathogens at the site of infection. Here is a review of the inflammatory cytokines and chemokines secreted by macrophages. In particular, we'll focus on the TNF-alpha and CXCL8. Now, TNF-alpha increases permeability of the capillaries, making it more leaky, so that our immune cell, in particular our monocyte macrophages, and as well as neutrophils, will be easier to get to the site of infection, and so does other inflammatory mediators will also leak out from the capillary. And in terms of CXCL8 being a chemokine, it has a huge role in recruiting neutrophils from the circulation to the site of infection. And we're going to look at the mechanisms of how the chemokine does that. Let's look at the chronology of an inflammatory response. We're here talking about an acute inflammatory response. Now, after initial injury or contact, macrophages will respond within a few minutes because they are already there in the tissue. Now, activations of macrophages will make it bigger enlargement, and when stationary cells, those that don't move, will break off and migrate to the site of infection and perform phagocytosis, leading to release of inflammatory cytokines. After macrophages respond, neutrophils will follow and usually happen within an hour. The neutrophil will migrate or chemotaxis to the site of infection and because it is attracted by these inflammatory cytokines and chemokines. Now, this is helped by changes in the vascular endothelial cells, in particular TNF-alpha as well as interleukin-1. Now, these will make the uh, vasculature more leaky. And also, the endothelial cells will express more cell adhesion molecules called CAMs on their surface, making it a little bit more sticky, so increasing adhesion or adherence of neutrophils to the site. Now, endothelial cells, you know, it will also contract and separate and leading to increased vascular permeability. So some of the hallmarks of the changes would be sticky and leaky. After that, CXCL8, the chemokines, will cause some changes to the neutrophils. And neutrophils would express more integrin molecules on their surface. Now, these integrins are considered as cell adhesion molecules, and they will interact with our CAM receptor or CAM molecules on the surface of endothelial cells, and therefore further increasing its adhesions or interactions with the vasculature endothelial cells, so it becomes more sticky. And you wonder, why does it want to be more sticky? And we'll see the reason. Remember, the neutrophils are in the bloodstream, and your blood flows are constantly moving, and the force is pretty fast. So we need to slow down the neutrophils so that they can get through the vasculature and get to the site of infection. So by making it more sticky, we will help to recruit these neutrophils. So what are the steps of neutrophil recruitment? Number one, we call it rolling adhesions. So initially, it's uh, slowed down by some weak interactions between neutrophil selectin receptor and selectin on the surface of vasculature endothelial cells. And therefore, it can be slowed down in the constantly flowing bloodstream. 
just slowing down a little bit is not enough. We need to stop the, the neutral fuel completely so that it can get through the vasculature and get to the site of infection. So how can we really stop them? It is done by tight binding. Now our chemokines, CXCL8, will adhere to the surface of endothelial cells, and our neutrophils have CXCL8 receptors that can bind to the chemokines. In addition, there are also a molecule called integrins on neutrophils that can bind to ICAM or type of a CAM that is expressed on endothelial cells. Now these interactions together along with selectin and selectin receptors create a tight binding. And afterward, the neutrophil would be able to perform diaspedesis, basically move through the junctions between the endothelial cells. Now this is also called extravasation. And, and the last step in the neutrophil recruitment is migration, okay, travel to the site of infection with high levels of chemokines and performed phagocytosis process. So in addition to neutrophils travel to the site of infection, we're going to have more macrophages travel to the site of infection. And this recruitment is very similar to neutrophils. But the difference is that we are first recruiting monocytes instead of recruiting macrophage directly. So monocytes in the circulatory, uh, in the blood flow is going to uh, also have uh, selectin bind to selectin receptors and then creating a sort of a loose adhesion and then followed by tight binding through chemokines and ICAM that we talked about in our last slide. Again, monocyte is going to also move through the junctions between the endothelial cells but small difference is that the monocyte is going to differentiate into macrophage or dendritic cells after it leaves the blood vessel. And these newly formed macrophages or dendritic cells is going to travel to the site of infection. So the endothelial cells were separating, creating gaps, and that's really what's leading to increased vascular permeability. Now we just talked about how these gaps allowed macrophages and neutrophils to go through. It also allowed chemokines to, to go in and out and attract more immune cells to the site of infection, such as basophils, eosinophils, and mast cells. Now, however, all these increase the permeability, meaning more liquids and other proteins can also leak out from the blood vessel and travel to the site of infections or infected tissues. This will lead to edema or swelling. So what is the purpose of edema? It's just so uncomfort. Well, other than it brings you uncomfort, it actually has some physiological role. By swelling up your site of infection, it can actually limit the spread of infection. And along with fibrinogen being released by the liver and facilitate blood clot or fibrin formation, it also creates a physical barrier and to further prevent the spread of infection. Like I said, the downside of swelling or edema would would stimulate pain receptors and leading to the painful sensations associated with any type of injury. Other than the physical changes that lead to painful sensation, inflammatory lipid mediators also plays a huge role in contributing to the symptoms. Now these lipid mediators are metabolites of the arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid will be broken down by two different enzymes, lipooxygenase and it generates leukotrienes, which has a role in mediating allergic response. And on the other branch, we have cyclooxygenase that can break down agrochidonic acid into prostaglandins, and they have a role in mediating pain.
At the end of an acute inflammation, after neutrophils finish all this phagocytosis process, it's going to undergo apoptosis. That under after apoptosis, this dead neutrophil is going to be degraded or cleared by macrophages through phagocytosis. And what's left behind are some of those white pus. Now, in fact, these white pus are often associated with an inflamed acne. And what makes macrophages know it is time to clean up these dead macrophages? It is through a omega omega three related molecules called resolvins. Now, this resolvins will actually stimulate macrophages to eat more of these cells that have undergone apoptosis, which is signaling the end stage of an acute inflammation. So in other words, resolvins is an anti-inflammatory mediator. So this lecture concludes all the basic principles related to the innate immune system. And we'll take a small break for a week and in our next meeting or next video in this series, we are going to look at adaptive or acquired immunity. Well, until then, please take care and I will see you next time. Bye.